welcome to chapter 12, lesson 2, where we get to look at changing populations. By the way, does the picture look any better? I did get a new video camera. I'm kind of excited about it, but I haven't had a chance to look at it on the computer, so I have no idea if it looks any better or not, but I hope it does, and I hope it makes it easy learning for you. This is way too hard for you to read, but if you have your books, it's on page 573, and it's really one of the, we hear a lot of bad news about the environment, but this is really good news. If you've ever been out in a boat, you know there's manatee zones where you need to slow down for manatees. Well, this shows us that what we've been doing has been working. In 1990, the population was 1,100. By 2015, it was 6,300. We had caused a huge decline in the manatee population. And now by protecting their habitats and allowing them to have what they need, the space they need, the food they need, the populations are coming back to a, a more reasonable and normal level. This is kind of a disturbing picture. Those are all baby spiders. All right, our essential questions are, how is a how is population movement related to competition? And why do human populations change? We have a few vocabulary words, but I think they're pretty easy to understand. Birth rate, death rate, real, real simple there. Extinct species, and I wonder if I made a mistake and put extinction on the other concept map, and it should go on this concept map. Endangered, threatened, you can see how all three of these relate. And migration, I think all of you, well, since we've explored the great southern white butterfly, we know that they migrate. You certainly have heard of birds that migrate. We know that sea turtles migrate. So there's a lot of migration all around us here, so that should be a familiar word. So let's dive into it. Oh, this is a great video on salmon. But instead of you watching it this way, I'm it's actually going to plug it in, and you'll like it. Watch what happens to the sand. It's fall in the Pacific Northwest of the United States, and the rivers are choked with salmon. Thousands of these fish are returning to lay eggs in the place they were born. Salmon get their start in these rivers. The cold, clean, and well-oxygenated water is vital to their initial survival. But soon after they're born, they leave this fresh water for a life in the sea. Unlike most freshwater fish, salmon move freely between the two environments. A salmon's brain sends hormones to its body so it can adjust to changes in salt content. The fish spend as many as eight years swimming in the sea, then head back to fresh water to lay their eggs. Most return to the exact stream where they were born. Scientists think they rely on the Earth's magnetic field to guide them in the ocean. Then their sharp sense of smell directs them to the right stream. It's a treacherous, often uphill journey, but these salmon are built to take it. They navigate around tricky obstacles, jump through waterfalls, and log hundreds of miles on their way. If that weren't enough, they also have to dodge dozens of predators in search of a good meal. Traveling against the river's current can be exhausting, but a calm pool behind the rocks provides a good place to rest. Near the end of the trip, salmon stop eating and their skin turns red. The pigment that colors their flesh moves into their skin as they use up stored fat. Finally, they reach a shallow location ideal for laying eggs. The females dig a nest in the gravel, while the males guard against predators. 
a female salmon can lay more than 3,000 eggs at a time. The males protect the eggs until the females die. This journey marks the end of a salmon's life. Worn out and starving, both males and females die soon after spawning. As their bodies decompose, they provide nutrients for the next generation. After about four months, the salmon eggs hatch. The young fish spend several months in the river before heading to the sea. This amazing cycle begins all over again. Okay, ah, there was something fishy about that video, but I hope you in, enjoyed it and remarkable, remarkable life that uh, the salmon go through and it's uh, definitely an uphill battle at the end for that. Okay, so a bird enjoying a spider. So birth rate, population's birth rate is the number of offspring produced over a given period of time. That makes perfect sense. Death rate is the number of individuals that die over the same time period. If we're looking at, say, the population of manatees, and the death rate is greater than the birth rate, you know what's going to happen. Eventually, you won't have any manatees. But if the birth rate is higher, then you will get more manatees, and that's what's going on right now. All right, there's a thing called exponential growth, and this is one of the things with the COVID-19 disaster we don't want because that virus can spread, if we let it, spread exponentially. And you get a curve like this, and it's really hard to stop, control, to treat. This is bacteria. I think you may recall, I think we decided that they um, duplicate every half hour. So if every half hour you get two more, you can see what exponential growth looks like. You start out with very low numbers, but then it just balloons up. And if you have a bacterial infection, it does hit you pretty quick. You start feeling sick and then really sick. Viral infections take longer, and we are seeing that with the COVID-19, where it can take anywhere from 5 to 14 days to, to show up. Okay, extinct species is pretty obvious, a species that has died out and no individuals are left. There's really a neat story about Merritt Island. Some of you live there. Uh, if you read in the text about a little bird called the dusky seaside sparrow. In Merritt Island, to get rid of the uh, mosquitoes, they would flood a lot of the areas with salt water, which would not allow the mosquitoes to live, but it also destroyed the habitat of the sparrow. So we ended up losing that bird. So we're supposed to describe how a species can become extinct, and I'm just going to give up and show it to you. A species becomes extinct when all the individuals die out. This can happen because of predation, natural disasters, disease, or environmental damage. Remembering these four main things, predation, natural disasters, disease, or environmental damage, may help us in the near future. How could I have found that answer if I was working all by myself and didn't have me to show it to you? It was in the book. You just had to read it. An endangered species is a species whose population is at risk of extinction. So you've often heard about uh, species that are endangered. Sea turtles are considered endangered. They're making a pretty good comeback. I've seen lots of tracks on the beach lately. Um, but we do need to be careful because they, they were close to getting wiped out too. And threatened, uh, this species is considered threatened because there uh, are still so few in the wild. So the question is, which is worse, endangered or threatened? I think endangered is the, the more serious than the threatened, and I'm disappointed your book doesn't point that out to you. Okay, so record the two factors that must be present for exponential growth to occur. 
So if you want your little colony of bacteria to grow like crazy, what do they need? They're going to need a lot of things. They're going to need space. They're going to need food. They're going to need water. Um, but basically, ideal conditions. So that covers all of that. And unlimited resources. If you give a species these two things, they can grow exponentially. Do you know what species we've seen grow exponentially? Us, human beings. Population decreases due to lack of basic needs, natural disasters, disease, and predation. Remember I told you we'd be using those four items again. Okay, so detail two possible outcomes of a population's continued decrease in size. Sometimes your book confuses me a little bit. Let's see. Detail two possible outcomes. One, two, or three. So we'll go with three outcomes. You could lose the things entirely. They could go extinct. They could be threatened. They could be endangered. And that's all they were after there. All right, this gets us to migration. It is the instinctive seasonal movement of a population of organisms from one place to another. And uh, uh, there's lots and lots of examples of migration. The salmon video I showed you was an example of a migration. So why do populations move? They can move because of overcrowding. There's a little video I'm going to plug in probably right after this about a creature called a lemming. I, if I can find the video, I was having some trouble finding it, so if there's no lemming video, just here's the basic story. Back in the 50s, Walt Disney made this movie about how lemmings, when it got too crowded, they would all run and, and commit mass suicide by jumping over a cliff. Well, it turns out lemmings don't do that. There were Disney personnel with big pieces of cardboard scaring them over the cliff. Um, and they didn't all die. Uh, they fell into the water and some swam back to shore and were okay. But they made it seem like this really dramatic thing. And for years and years, people, you know, they, they actually use it as a phrase. They say, oh my gosh, they're acting like lemmings, which means you're just kind of following the crowd. And the crowd's leaping over a cliff to its doom. So you, but lemmings don't do that. And you as a human shouldn't do that either. Make your own good decisions. Okay. Also, we can have seasonal change, and because of seasonal change, you get migration. So these are the main reasons populations move. And as I mentioned, human population growth. This is the year 750, 1000, 1250, not much change. The population's pretty steady. And then somewhere in the 1700s, we got really good at growing food and the population did this. Does this graph look familiar? Have you seen a graph like this in the recent past? Doesn't it look a lot similar to the bacteria graph? And it's all okay, this is fine, as long as there are adequate resources, as long as we don't reach that carrying capacity. Because if we do, then you usually get a, you can get a leveling out or you can get a dramatic fall. We want to avoid that dramatic fall. A nice leveling out would be a good thing. All right, so as far as uh, human moves, populations can move between countries and states, counties, countries. This is same county, so the vast majority of people who move do so within the same county, 72.5%. Uh, 20% stay in the same state but go to a different county, 4% go to a different state, and 3.5% go overseas. So that's the way migration with humans looks, at least from 2013-14, that's where this graph came from. Yeah, there's our lemmings. Um, if you were here in the class, I have it rigged where I just click this one, but click this one. This shows the dramatic Disney version. And then this shows you the guys chasing the lemmings with the, 
the pieces of cardboard, but they don't actually do this. And there's our great southern white. I really appreciated all of you who took the time to watch the video and answer the questions. You did a nice job. Um, I'm, you know, learning is just like you are that if I give you a sheet to put answers on, I need to somehow have you make the answers look a little different than however I put it. That's why I'm asking you to bold or make blue your answers. And I'll give you extra points for that when I, when I need that because it makes your answer pop out instead of me having to dig in there and look. You know, and there's a, about a hundred or so of these things I get to look at if I'm lucky and everyone turns them in. But anyway, that's uh, you'll, you know all about this guy and you've looked at, studied him, we'll move on. They're all over the place. I saw a bunch as I was walking this morning. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of lesson two. Thank you for your attention. And what did I not do? I didn't show you the concept map for lesson two. So when we come back, I'll start lesson three with the concept map for this one, which I think, or maybe I'll just pop it in there. I'll have to do one more video, do some fancy editing. That's what I'll do. Thanks for watching. Here is the chapter 12 lesson two concept map. I use population as the center word. You can choose any word that works as long as it's a relevant, usually a word that's within the chapter. Um, so I went with population is decreased through death rate, increased through birth rate, if it's mishandled, it can lead to an extinct species, an endangered species, or a threatened species. And finally, populations, ah, I messed up, migrate. But I didn't put a link in there. So I'm not gonna refilm this to go put the link in. You're gonna have to put the link in for migration. And the link you need is populations tend to move. And that just, then it's migration. So just put tend to move or want to move or need to move. And that's your link.